Please open your Bibles to the book of Mark, chapter 4. Mark, chapter 4. We'll look at verses 35 to 41. Mark, chapter 4. Thirty-five to forty-one. Okay, I, I don't know what it is, but I want to try attempting this again. Um, <laughs> having me read first, and then you guys recite back, and we read the last verse together. So let's try that. The day when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. A furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat, so it was nearly swamped. Man, can we, okay. He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. Together? Oh, sorry. Not together. Together? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. Amen. That was disastrous. Um, okay. I'll just read it from later on. Um, today I want to talk about having what kind of faith we have in the type of storms that we face in life. Okay? Uh, some of you might be going through difficulty right now, are in the midst of some storms that you are dealing with. Maybe some of you have nothing going on. There aren't any storms in your life. If there aren't, then praise God for that. Right? Um, not saying that it's going to happen to me or to you very soon, but storms do happen to all of us from time to time. Okay? Uh, that my prayer is that you'll be well equipped that when storms do come, not if they come, but when they come, we'll be able to face head on and be able to overcome the struggles and the storms that we will face. Amen? So that is the hope for today, okay? So I want to be able to look through this passage and, and think about a couple of things, applications, what we can take on and how we can really better live our lives to really strive uh, to please God, okay? Uh, the fact is... Um, Storms that we face today aren't so much external, but I think we deal with more internal storms that we go through. Internal things, internal sufferings and difficulties that we have to, we go through. Okay? For much of us, our lives are pretty predictable right? in comparison to how the New Testament people were, how the disciples were faced with uh, in the Sea of Galilee. Our lives are very different from theirs and our lives are very predictable in the things that we go through on an everyday basis. For example... If we want to know what the weather is like, we just open our phone, open an app, and it tells us today it's going to be this and that, and, and then we can dress accordingly. It's going to be pretty cold, and um, in Korea, it has been pretty consistent, where in the winters, it's, it gets pretty chilly, and it's windy during the day and night, and so we can embrace that. We can prepare for those things. It's kind of predictable. Uh, when we go home... Uh, for us who take buses or subways, we open our phones and we can check the times on when, when the buses are coming, when the trains are coming, and when we will get home. And everything can be estimated. Everything is predictable. But some of the things outside the predictable things that we have in our lives, we still have storms and situations and difficulties that still come and hit us and attack us in a way where sometimes we are not ready for it, right? Unpredictable things do happen in life. That's the fact of life. For example, this morning, I don't know what it is, but Sunday mornings, like, um, I always see some kind of a car accident. Maybe it's early in the morning, um, having to do with a lot of drunk driving, I guess. What, I don't know what it is, but... You know, I don't plan on, okay, today I'm going to go and on my way to church, I'm going to see something happen. I don't have any of those expectations, God, you know. Um, but things do happen unexpectedly. Thank God, you know, like uh, that person didn't look that they were severely injured. But things do happen in life, right? When you're going through life, things happen in life where it feels like storm is coming into your life. Now, in those situations, how can we really embrace, embrace ourselves to be able to face uh, those struggles? Um, and 
uh, I want to go over a couple of points to really um, prepare our hearts for that, okay? First thing I want us to see through this text is Jesus, we have to understand that Jesus is present in the midst of the storms. A lot of the times we tend to forget that when we become Christians, that equally automatically means that I will not have difficulty. I will not have storms in life, right? Um, if God is with us, we will we, we'll be problem free. That's our philosophy. Hakuna Matata. You guys, okay. Um, so if we think we have trouble, God must not be happy with us or he's abandoned us. He's left us and we kind of tend to get into this mode. Where is God in my life? Does he not love me? Does he not care for me? And we begin to have these doubts and thoughts. But we have to understand that God, Jesus, is in the midst of the storms. Amen? I'm not convinced. Jesus is in the midst of the storms. Amen? Right? No matter what situations that we go through in life, Jesus is in the midst of the situations. Verse 37, a furious squall came, squall came and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Right? Um, but 36 tells us that Jesus was actually where? In the boat. So in the midst of all the waves crashing and all these things happening, Jesus was right in the middle of the things. He was inside of the boat. There are plenty of times in the Bible where people who follow God, they desired him. Um, they were faced with storms of life, external things that happened to them and internal things that, that happened. For example, Noah. Okay. Uh, the summary of his life was that he found favor with God. God was pleased with his life, but he also found himself on the boat in the middle of the storm, in the ark that he had to uh, carry. You know what they say, why his name is Noah. Do you guys know? <laughs> okay. When God told him to build an ark and say, there's going to be rain coming your way, he said, no. Ah. Okay. <laughs> I, uh, sorry. It was funny in my head. I couldn't resist. Okay. Uh, so, <laughs> there are times in my life where I face storms, right? I face difficulty and I ask the question, God, where are you? Are you there? Are you listening? Are you seeing what's going on and happening in my life? There are times where I tend to question that as well. Uh, this is not what I expected. God, where are you? And sometimes we have these doubts and we have these thoughts but let's, be, uh, let's make sure we know in the midst of all the crazy storm that is happening in this situation, Christ is in the middle. Jesus is in the middle. And he has to be our true anchor that we hold on to. No matter what happens in life, let's pray that he becomes the true thing that we hold on to. No matter what everything may pass away, that we may never let go of Christ. Okay? Um, second thing is, Jesus cares about us in the storm. Okay? What great news is that? Jesus cares about us in the storm. Verse 38, Jesus saw the stern. Uh, Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion, right? He was sleeping. Sometimes we kind of need to have that kind of a perspective that Jesus had. If Jesus was sleeping, you know, then things are going to be okay. If Jesus, the creator of all things, and he who is in control of everything, he's sleeping, why do we tend to panic all the time? Why do we need to have the, have the thought process of ha wanting control over all situations? We have to understand that Jesus is in the midst of our storms, and he cares about us, and he's saying it's going to be okay. And that's why he's sleeping, right? Uh, he doesn't see it as a big thing that we make it out to be all the time. When, when things happen, we tend to panic so much, okay? Um, I share this with people who came out to MC once, but... For example, like I, there's a situation that I always I'm, am reminded of, the time that I panicked like crazy. Uh, when I lived in Boston by myself, the, I, t I was taking a nap, and uh, it was probably like a Monday, and um, someone was going around knocking on the door. And on my door of the apartment, we didn't have those holes that you could look out to see who is knocking. But without a thought, I just got up from my bed and I just opened the door without even asking who it is. Okay, and it turned out to be this someone from this electrical company, and he was saying, you know, um, I'm going around, and you know, I think I can help you save some um, money on your electrical bill, right? I'm, I'm, I didn't even think about what he was talking about. Um, thinking about it, how much can you possibly save on an electrical bill, right? But I wasn't thinking that. I was like, okay then, you know, let's see what you have to say. And so he started talking and saying, you know, if you give me your old bill, I can look some information up and crunch some numbers and I can tell you how much money you'll be saving. 
And I was like, oh, I don't know about giving you all my information. It has my personal info on it. I don't know if it's safe. I don't know if it'd be a good idea. Okay. And then um, right next to, I, he was by the door, and I went by the door, and we were chatting. And he saw a jersey that I had, right? It was a football jersey. And me being from New York, I had a Jets, sad to say, I had a Jets uh, jersey. And we were talking about sports. And all of a sudden, him talking about sports, oh, yeah, did you watch that game? And then I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, that game was good. And we started talking about sports for like 30 minutes, right? I didn't even know why he was there. We started talking about things. And then naturally, like, he became my friend. And so I was like, okay, you're my friend, so I'll just naturally give you my personal information and you can rob me, right? And so I gave him my uh, electrical bill and he crunched all those numbers. He's like, oh, yeah, just sign here, 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 and then you'll be, set, and you'll, you'll be saving money. And then be like, you're, you're on your way. Everything is set. I was like, okay, great. Thanks, bye. He goes out, and then first thing I did was I kind of looked up the company, right? Because company, I never heard of the company. I went on Google, and you know, as you're typing on Google, you know how it kind of helps you to identify what it is? I'm like, uh-oh. And right next to the company's name, it said scam. I said, oh my goodness, what just happened? And I started panicking. I'm like, what, what happened? I'm, oh, I'm going to jail. Like, I'm my, I have identity theft and oh, I can't live in this country anymore. I started like, I'm going to be robbed and all things are going through my head. And like, I'm still in my pajamas and I run out my apartment door looking for this guy. He's not there. Right? I thought he was going to go around and try to get everyone in the, in the apartment to sign up, but that wasn't the case. And so I ran outside on my barefoot, was looking for this guy. I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to kill him when I see him. Like, he just robbed me and identity theft. And I started going crazy. I started panicking. What do I do? What do I do? Instead of me at that situation of trying to pray and ask God and see God in the midst of all this, as soon as it happened, first thing I did was call my parents, call all the friends that I know who work in this field or not. It didn't matter. I called as many people as possible and tried to figure out what I can do with this situation on my own, right? I started panicking. Now, some of us, when we go through situations in life, when things happen, when storms happen, when unexpected things happen in life, how many of us are in the same situation, right? We tend to do the same. We start panicking about what do I do? Why am I going through this and start complaining to God? And we start calling all the people that we know and we seek counsel. But last thing that we do, we don't even think about going before God and asking God, God, I need you right now. Help me to have wisdom. Help me to have guidance. What do I do in this situation? Okay, right? Instead of that, we tend to panic a lot. Okay, so we have to understand that God cares for us and that when he's, he's, you know, got us, right? When we submit our lives to him, we have to understand that he is in control. So many times, let's not be people who try to take control of our situations and worry and be filled with anxiety and lose sleep and just start going crazy over things when simply we can just go to the Father who loves us and cares for us so much, right? God's got our back. What, what do we really need to worry about? Another example that I can think of, a time when I was younger, like I remember my father being a pastor, he used this a lot in his examples, in his sermons, and I feel like it's my turn to use it in my sermons. Um, there was a time when I was like three years old, when I was like really fat and chubby and I, I couldn't walk properly. Um, um, <laughs> He would let me off on the street, and the stories that he'd tell me, I don't remember this. Maybe he's making it I don't remember, but he would tell me that I would tell my dad, I said, Dad, I'm hungry. And I would just go into a bakery and start, like, picking up bread, opening them up, and eating them on the spot. And my dad would come to me. He's like, do you have money? He's like, no, but you do. And then I would just keep going and half eaten and open another and I start make, spending, like, oman on, right? And I'm in the bakery. Other times, like when I'm tired, when we're walking down the street, when I'm tired, I'm like, Dad, I'm tired. And all of a sudden, I stick my hand out on the road, and the cab stops by, and I just get in. My dad is like, do you have money? What are you doing? It's like, no, I don't, but you do, right? I think that's what, how God really is for us and how we need to look at God, that he is our father. Not for us to go in the bakery and say, God, pay for this, right? I'm not saying that, but knowing and understanding the fact that God's got our back. Right? We have a God who loves us so much. How do we know? John 3.16 tells us the purpose of Jesus coming into this world is so that he can save sinners like us. And he showed that love by dying upon the cross for our sins so that we can have this relationship with him. 
So we know he loves us immensely, unconditionally, unexplainably, so much so, but yet so many times we are blinded by our world, our situations, the storms in our lives that we don't tend to really seek after God the same way that he wants to seek after us. So I, we have to understand to know that God really loves us and cares about us, right? First thing, God, God is present in the midst of our storm. Second thing is God cares about us in the midst of our storms, okay? Um, and so he cares enough. When the, when the disciples came, he, you know, they were panicking, and they were like, what do we do? There's a huge storm, and we're about to die, and we don't know what's going to happen, right? They go to Jesus. They find Jesus, and they see him sleeping. They wake him up. To say, don't you care, right? That's what, that's what the disciples say. Uh, verse 39, he got up, he rebuked the wind, and, and he quieted the waves. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. But right before that point, to get to that point, the disciples were panicking. They go to Jesus, says, and they say, don't you care? Don't you care about me? Don't you care about our situation? Don't you know what's going on right now? And sometimes we get to that point too, right? When we're going through difficulties and hardships, we're praying about things, and we tend to feel like, God, is God really listening to my prayers? Does he care? God, do you care about me? Right? We tend to do that a lot. But I'm here to tell you, as the Bible says, that he loves us, that he cares for us, that he says we are fearfully made. In our, he knew us in our mother's womb before we were even born. Right? He thought of us, and he says we are fearfully and wonderfully made. And, and he loves us to the point of going to the cross on our behalf, taking our place, okay? So we need to not forget that reminder, not just when we come to church, oh, yeah, the gospel, yeah, Jesus died for me, oh, yeah. Not that, but be able to have that reminder on our everyday basis as we live our lives, as we go to school, as we meet with friends, whatever it is, be reminded of how much God really cares for you. In the midst of your difficulties and your storms, be reminded of how much God really cares and loves you each and every day. Okay? Third thing is we get to know Jesus more intimately through the storms that we face, that we go through. Verse 40, he said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? Verse 41, they were terrified and asked each other, who is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. They were scared of the storm before of what was happening, but now they were scared of Jesus because who is this guy? He is telling the waves, not even, you can't talk to the wind and the waves. That's crazy. But yet Jesus goes out and he speaks and they are all calm. Okay? Um, through the storm, they discover something that they never knew about Jesus. That he is more powerful than the wind and the waves. The power that he has. Okay? Uh, the wind makes big noise, the waves crash, and Jesus says, stop, and all just die down. Storms in, in our lives present opportunities for us to get to know God better, of who he is, what kind of power he has. Something that we struggle so mightily with that we lose sleep over day after day that we say, oh, this is such a big issue in my life. How am I going to overcome this? What am I going to do over this situation about the next step in life, about your future, about your school, the decisions that you have to make? God is kind of looking at everything in the palm of his hands. He's saying, come to me, you know, I will help you. I have the power to help you get through these situations. Not necessarily saying that when we go before God and present God with our problems and our storms and our situations, that he's just going to override everything and it's going to be gone, but he's going to help us and find, to help us to find a way to get through the situations. And when we're getting through the situations, we see the power of God being on display, Right? We, know, we have to understand that God is not just, the God that we worship is not just a small God. It just can't do things, right? We believe in a God who created the heavens and the earth with the word of mouth, right? The power that he has, right? And so he, he can give us the power to help us to get through these situations and overcome our current state. What can't he do? when he has the power to raise his son from the grave, to overcome death and overcome sin on behalf of everyone, right? 
He has that kind of a power. Jesus wakes up. He didn't go out and he started helping. Okay, what do we do in this situation? Let me help you get the water out that is filling in the boat. He simply said, stop. And everything became calm and silent under Jesus' power. Let's go before the Lord with confidence, right? That he has the power to help us to get over these situations and the struggles that we might be faced with be able to get through it, to hold on to Christ because he's the one, only one who can help us get through these uh, matters, okay? Um, Another thing is um, going through storms enables us to testify to others about who God really is, right? Verse 36 mentions how there were other boats around him. It wasn't just the disciples that he was on the on the. Um, the Sea of Galilee with, there were other boats that were there, okay? And Jesus, he calmed the storm of the whole sea. And there must have been other boats that were there. And when they got to the other side of the boat, as they said in verse 35, they might have asked the question, who is that guy? How is it possible this crazy storm that was happening in the this, in this sea was able to stay calm and just come to a halt by this man's word of mouth? Who is this guy? And the disciples can easily go and say, well, this guy, he's Jesus Christ. And he could start talking about who he is and become witnesses for other people on behalf of Christ. Now, that's what God really wants for us, for us to really begin to know his power, to begin to know who he really is, what he has done for us, and how much he really loves us, right? How he is in the midst of everything that we are dealing with. Not only that, but be able to share that with the people around us. Right? There's so many people out there who don't know this truth, the love of Jesus Christ, of what God has done for them as well as he has done for me. So what, what we do is when God works through us in the situations and the storms that we are able to overcome and get through, we say, well, let me just tell you about how I was able to overcome that situation, overcome those storms and be able to withstand um, when, w- let me tell you about this God that I believe and serve who has been working in my life. And that's what we are called to do as followers of true followers of Christ, that we can really testify to the people around us what he has done in my life, of how he took a sinner, a wretched, dirty, disgusting sinner like myself. He would take my life and love me, care for me, and embrace me, and walk with me on a personal level, daily basis, died for me upon the cross, gave everything for me so that I can be here and live my life and, and be with him on, uh, every day. And that's something that we should be able to testify and be able to share and say, this is the God that I believe in. Won't you take a moment to listen and hear about him? Not only just talk about it, but be able to live through it, right? Live as true followers of Christ. That's, I think that's the best thing that we can really show our testimony, not just saying, well, just look what God has done for me, right? I mean, I'm not saying that's bad. That's great as well. But being able to show through our action by loving other people when they, they won't look like they're, they can be loved, right? Loving our neighbors to really care for other people, to really represent Christ in his likeness, in our attitudes, in our speech, in our actions, in everything that we do. And I think by us living that kind of life, we can really shine Christ's light and represent God and let others know and be able to testify on his behalf of what a great God he is and what he can do in their lives as well as he has done for ours. Okay? And the last thing is going through storms enables um, us to get through storms together, right? It wasn't just one disciple. It wasn't just Peter. It wasn't just John or James or just a single person on the boat that Jesus was dealing with. There were a group of disciples that were together, and they were able to witness this and able to get through this storm together. I think that's the importance of the body of Christ, right? We're so privileged in being able to worship here together and be able to break it up into small groups. Why do we do that? So that we can be more intimate, get to know more about each other, right? The year is already coming to an end and we only have a couple of weeks of small group left. Think about how well do you know people in your small group? I'm not not saying, you know, where they go to school, how old they are and, and just the basic information like that. But things like what are some of the things that they're struggling with? What are, the, some, what are some storms that they're dealing with in their lives? That, what are their prayer requests that I have been praying with them and for them about? 
Do you know those things? I think it's such a great opportunity for us to come together in, in bodies of Christ and be able to get through the storms together. Maybe you personally are right now are not going through the storm, but yet a brother and a sister in the small group might be going through storms, difficulties, big decisions to make. You can play the role of interceding for them. You can play the role knowing that, look, God has helped me to weather the storm and get through this situation, and he will give you the power to do so and be of encouragement towards one another. I think that's what really building the body of Christ ought to be. But the bigger question is, we can know this and think this and, and say, oh, yeah, that's right. We need to have, be the body of Christ and do all that. But if we don't really actively do it, it's useless. And so, you know, even the two weeks that we have of small group, current small group that we have, Make the effort. Don't say, oh, it's over. It's too late. You know, what's the point? Instead of that, but be able to take every opportunity, every moment that you have to really get to know at least one brother, one sister, right? Know what's going on in their lives. Be able to sh openly share your prayer requests with them so that you can pray together and be able to pray for the ministry and pray for the different uh, ministry groups that we have. And that's, in essence, that we can really begin to build the body of Christ. And that's what we're called to. So being able to wither the storm together, I think, is so important, right? It's not just for, oh, God died for me and it's okay that I just live my life for Christ and be satisfied with that. No, God has called us into a community, right? There's a reason why a church, a group of people come together to worship God. And God delights in that when he sees his beloved children come together in fellowship and worshiping God together. And when we begin to practice that actively, God looks down upon us and he, and he calls it beautiful. Like what, what more would he want, right? Of his children coming together to worship and sharing in each other's burdens, as the Bible says. I think that's what we need to strive to do, okay? So, Kind of just recapping, if you're going through storms in life, be reminded that Christ is in your boat. Say that to the person next to you. Christ is in your boat. For those of you who came late, you might be thinking, what is he talking about? <laughs> right? Christ is in our boat. He is in the midst of our struggles, of the storms that we go through. Right? He cares for us. He loves us. So much so. Let's not forget that, right? The reason why we come together to worship God, to really celebrate in what he has done for us is because of the love that he has shown upon the cross, of how he has died for each and every one of us here. Let's not forget that. Let's not forget the greatest love that was shown upon the cross. Okay? Be able to embrace that. And get to know God be able to embrace the storms that you have, okay? Don't look at struggles and say, oh, why is my life like this? And why am I going through all these struggles? Instead, be able to look to God and say, God, I thank you that I have these challenges in my life. Help me through this moment to get, draw closer to you, that I can rely more on you, that I can spend more time praying about these things to you, right? James, uh, book of James chapter one, it talks about, um, be joyful in the trials that you go through. Be joyful, right? Be joyful when you have storms in life is, is a way where I, I want to be able to get through this. I know I can because God will help me get through it. Not by my own power, not by me seeking through people around me, by my own efforts, but by the power of God. The power that he has can be empowered upon me that I can be able to wither the storm and overcome. And in hindsight, when we look back, we say, man, God was so faithful to me in my life. And I hope that really becomes our testimony that we can begin to share with the people around us, saying, look what God has done for me. I'm so thankful and grateful, and I just want to praise him all the more with my life. And I hope that becomes reality for us when we sing songs of praise, right? We can really openly, freely say to the Lord, thank you, Lord, for helping me through the storms of life. Thank you for my current situation right now. Although, you know, looking at it from a human perspective, it looks like a huge mess, but Lord, I trust in you. 
And, you know, I've come this far trusting in you. What's the point of going back? Help me to trust in you all the more. 100%, not halfway, half in and half out. But knowing that you will help me to weather the storm and overcome the situation. And later I can testify on your behalf of what a great God that you are and what you have done through my life. I hope we can really begin to live in this kind of a way, sharing with one another, building the body of Christ. And I pray that STEM may be known as a place where we are able to share the love of God. Not just, oh, STEM, oh, yeah, I don't know about that church, whatever. Whatever people might say, it doesn't matter. But that our hearts and our attitudes may be, STEM may, a, STEM may be a place where a group of people who really love God, who trust in the Lord, and can really encourage one another, be there for one another, another to really build the body of Christ and be able to embrace in that. And truly become the body of Christ that Christ is calling us to be. Amen? Let's bow down in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you once again for what a great God that we serve. What a great God that we serve would want to, uh, week after week, call us into your holy presence and want to meet with us. And not only on a weekly basis, but on an everyday basis, every moment basis of how much you really love us. Lord, we pray that we may begin to look to you in the midst of our storms and the struggles that we face and know that you are in control, God. Although the end result might not be the way that we want and are expecting, Lord, help us not to stop there but continue to trust in you for your plans are perfect and greater than what we could ever come up with, God. And help us to really become the body of Christ, to really intercede on behalf of our brothers and sisters. That we really may be able to build each other up, Lord. So that we may share in each other's burdens and pray together and cry together. Really just be there for one another of encouragement, Lord. So that we can be filled with your love and be able to draw to, uh, closer to you together individually and corporately as a body of Christ. Lord, we look forward to these moments where we may be able to rely more on you and less on ourselves. That you may truly be the God of our lives, Lord. Remind us, Lord, once again. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.